Howdy and welcome to the 10-Week Bible Study. This is week 7, day 4 of our study of First and 2 Timothy. I'm your host, Aaron Hibbs, and today we're talking about 2 Timothy 1, 13-14. Welcome back to the 10-Week Bible Study. Again, I'm your host, Aaron Hibbs. Before we get started, I want to encourage you to remember to read First and Second Timothy 10 times in these 10 weeks. We're in week seven, so you got four weeks left that you can read it four times in the next four weeks. This really can transform your life and your experience with God's Word. With that, let's go ahead and pray before we start today. Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your Word has to say to us, God? Speak to us. Fascinate us with your Word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's Word to be reading today from the NIV. This is 2 Timothy 1, starting in verse 13. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. <clears throat> Paul in First and Second Timothy he says things like this multiple times. He talks about sound doctrine, sound words, which is obviously he's, he's talking about the teaching and, and really kind of the sum total of, of teaching and doctrine that Paul's given to Timothy. Remember, keeping in mind that this is, uh, Paul is thinking this is probably the last time he's ever going to write anything to Timothy. And so he's, he's saying that the sum total of everything I've, I've said to you, keep that in mind and hold fast to it. And that's a tall order. That's a really tall order that, that God is, is asking us to hold to that pattern of sound teaching. One of the things that I have found interesting through the course of my life, and this is one of the things that people struggle with the most that I've, I've seen at times, non-believers especially, is, you know, whose interpretation of scripture is right and and doesn't everyone argue over it? And you know who's to say that your interpretation is right, your interpretation is wrong? For the last nearly 2,000 years, and we can see that almost immediately after Jesus ascends from the earth, we see in the book of Acts, almost immediately there is contention, not from outside the church and with the church, but within the church, within the body of believers, there's contention and in arguing and wrestling over how to interpret and how to understand scripture and its application to our lives and, and interpretation of that almost immediately. And, and for almost 2000 years, just a few years, I have 2000 years right now, there's been an ongoing contention and at times fight and even bloody fights at times, unfortunately over interpretation and understanding of scripture. If this wasn't a supernatural thing, if it wasn't a supernatural thing that God himself was breathing on, people are so good at screwing things up. There would be no Christianity today. There would no longer be this religion that we call Christianity. Governments have risen and fallen. If it was just a set of ideas and ideals, those things come and go, and they've come and gone many, many times throughout human history. There's something more to this. It is supernatural, in fact. And so this, this notion of whose interpretation do we believe Really and truly, that's not even the thing that's keeping the church going. So some people would look at this and say, you know, we, we've got to hold to this pattern of sound doctrine for the sake of the church. And I've seen this, I've heard this so many times, for the sake of God, for the sake of, of, of what he's doing in the earth. And let me, let me say that he does not need it. God does not need us to hold to the pattern of sound doctrine Paul is speaking to Timothy as his spiritual father. He's saying, you hold fast to the pattern of, of sound words, sound doctrine that you heard from me, right? They will keep you grounded, Timothy. So many people take on this, 
the, the weight on their shoulders. They've got to carry the doctrine of the church. And it's just not true. Paul never says this. Now, now, you could say, Paul, if you're a pastor, if you're a leader, Paul does put a weight on leaders saying, if there is our people that are coming against this and leading people away from that, you got to deal with it. You have to deal with it. That's a real thing. But the weight of doctrine of the Christian church does not rest on my shoulders. It does not rest on any human being's shoulders. The Holy Spirit is the one driving this boat. He is the captain. It's not us. So we do not hold fast to the pattern of sound doctrine for the sake of the church. Although that sounds like a good goal. We do it for us. We do it so that we will be rooted and grounded in truth. The Holy Spirit's taking care of the church. Through all the fights and through all of the problems and issues that have arise, arisen and come and gone over 2,000 years, we are still here and there are still people that call themselves Christians and we are still fighting over it. But we are still here. And that's by the power of the Holy Spirit and nothing else. Nothing else. For, for a religion, let's say it like this, to last as long as Christianity have. And there's others that are still around as well. There's other religions, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, all those things. They're very old too. And they're also very supernatural. There is a supernatural thing keeping that going. We have the one true God keeping this thing going. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling his people, indwelling, inhabiting, and, and, and dwelling within us that's keeping this thing going. And there's also a supernatural element to Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam continuing to go. And it's not the one true God. But things don't last. Things don't last this long if there's not a supernatural component. And so this, this doctrine that we're to hold to, it's, it's not for the sake of the church universal. It's not so much for the sake of our individual church. If you're a, a pastor, a teacher, then yes, there is that component to it. But even, even then, those people's souls are, are not your ultimate responsibility. Now, God will hold you to account for those. He really will. If you're a teacher, a pastor, he really will hold you to account for those that you've taught and led. But ultimately, it's you that you're responsible for. And holding to this doctrine, it's, it's for your sake. Churches will rise and fall, and the Holy Spirit will still be directing and leading the church. And so for us, we keep these things, like Paul says, by the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. And by God's grace, we will continue to do that. And he will continue to lead the church until Jesus comes back. For the 10-week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10-week Bible study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.